When you're first setting up your Hike Central Control client, there is an often overlooked section called the Management section. It's located on the right hand side of the screen, and as you can see, it contains several subsections the Download Center, Local Pictures, Local Recording, Log, System, and Help. Let's go ahead and dive into the Management section by clicking on Download Center. First and foremost, I want you to see that on the left hand side of the screen now in the navigation tree are all of the different sections that we saw on the main screen. Local picture, local recording, log, system, and help. So we can actually move to any one of those sections directly from here instead of having to go back to the main screen as we navigate through this. But we'll start off by talking about the download center. The download center's name describes exactly what it does. It allows me to see all of my downloads, whether in progress or already completed. So right now I have selected all downloads and we can see that there is a download that's in progress, but it's currently paused. I paused it so that you could see what it would look like and a download that's been completed. I can go ahead and start that download up again by clicking on start. And then what I did earlier, just so that you could see the download as it's taking place, I clicked on pause. In any case, I can see just what's downloading or I can see just what's done. We also have to notice across the top of the screen, there's a few additional icons here. There's a start all and there's a stop all. That would certainly be for the downloading section. Want to start all my downloads? Want to stop all my downloads? Delete all can apply to multiple screens. So I want to delete all the current pending downloads or in progress downloads or do I want to delete downloads that have already been completed? And last but not least, I can also download a copy of VS Player. From the download section, we can move to the local picture section. And here's where you have saved snapshots from the live view of a camera while you're in the monitoring section of Control Client. Now, in order to see those pictures, you actually have to choose which areas or cameras you want to search pictures for. So in this case, I've actually chosen this area here called specialty cameras, and I have chosen to view all the cameras from that particular area. Once I've done that, I can go ahead and choose when I want to search. And in this case, last six hours, today, yesterday, last seven days, whatever it happens to be, I'll just choose today and click on search and I'm going to get obviously the same result because I did these two snapshots today. Now once I have all the snapshots that I want to see loaded up on the screen then I could choose an individual snapshot by clicking on its tick box or I can choose all by ticking the all box in the selection area above the individual snapshots. I have a save as feature if I want to move these maybe to a different folder I can upload them to an FTP site. That FTP site has to be set up though. We'll see how to do that in just a few minutes. I could print these pictures and I can delete these pictures. And if I wanted to, I could see my upload queue if I was uploading lots of images to an FTP. So these were snapshots that were taken. We also have local recordings. So again, while you're in control client in the live view, you can initiate something called a local recording. And once we came here, we would go ahead and initiate a search for those local recordings based on an area and the cameras within that area, and then a particular time period. And we would see a list of those local recordings. So just like with the pictures, we can select them all. We could save them to a different location. We could upload them to an FTP or we could delete them. One thing that's not here is print, because obviously you can't print a video clip. The next area is the log area. And in the log area, there's a lot of information here. And you might be asked at some point in time to share some of this information with technical support. So we can choose from different log types, whether it's an operation log or a system log. The system type, all system types or various subsystem types based on whatever it is that's being troubleshot. And then it could be further filtered by a particular user. And of course, a time period for those log files. Now, once we have gotten the log file that we actually want or the filtered log files that we want, we could go ahead and export that 
and then provide that information to tech support. Moving on, let's talk about system. There's a lot of information in here that uh, people don't realize is actually here. So we'll start off with our basic settings and we'll start with the general settings. So we have network performance, picture format, maximum mode, auto login, resume last interface, and we can save these changes or we can restore default values. The second part of this is image basic settings. And basically what we're configuring here is picture parameters, the scale, the play performance, etc. Some of these items have a blue information button where if you hover over it, it will give you a pop-up description of what the particular setting is. But I would probably recommend to you before you start playing with these, you might want to open up the Hike Central Control Client User Manual for more detailed information on each of these items or just leave it at the default value. Next we have the file section. This is the one that a lot of people miss. Where are our files going to be saved? So earlier we saw that we had local pictures, we had local videos or local recordings. These are the paths, the default paths where these items would be saved. So you can change these default paths by browsing to a different location if you choose to do so. And here we also have a package location. Package location would be, say, if there's a new version of Control Client that requires you to download an installation file. When you download that installation file, this is where it would be saved. And if you wanted to upload information to an FTP site, this is where you would go ahead and set up your FTP information, IP address, port, username, password, and finally the path within that FTP site where you want to save that information. Keyboards and joysticks, this is where I can do those kind of basic configurations of certain hotkeys on my keyboard or if I'm using a USB joystick, maybe to control PTZs and other functions. This is where I can do the programming for those items. Now beyond the basic settings, we have the application settings and here in the live view, I can customize the live view toolbar. I could remove the icons that perhaps don't fit a particular application such as if my particular customer has no fisheye cameras, then perhaps I want to go ahead and remove the fisheye de-warping icon. It's just one example. I can also then choose if I want to always display the toolbar and where I'd like for it to be displayed, and I can click on Save. In playback, I get basically the same options, but notice that the system is saying, hey, you made a change, do you want to save it? And I'm going to go ahead and choose OK. So I've gone ahead and saved that change. In playback, I get a list of all the different playback icons and I can go ahead and remove those as necessary and then also decide if I want to always display the toolbar. And finally, in the alarm center, here I have the default alarm sounds for high, medium, and low priority alarms. If I want to know what that sound sounds like, I can go ahead and click on the play button to hear it. Now there's our high alarm sound and our medium and our low. I personally don't like high, so I'm going to go ahead and change it. I've gone ahead and set up a different WAV file and I saved it to my desktop, so I'm going to browse to it and I'm going to choose this file called Red Alert Trimmed. And now I have To me, that sounds a little more high priority. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. But that's just to show you how easily you could make that kind of a change. And finally, we come to the help section. Now in the help section, the first thing you see is you can view a copy of the user manual. Now that user manual is going to open up in a PDF format and it's going to look something like this. Now you could go ahead and start scrolling through it or you can scroll through the table of contents or you could use the search tool to search for a particular word or phrase and jump directly to a section within the help file. Ultimately, I would recommend to you that you might want to go ahead and do a save as and save a copy of this locally so you have direct access to it without having to open up the actual control client in order to view it in the future. And let's take a look at the right hand side of the screen. This is our license details and here it will show us what we're authorized and how we're using those authorizations. So in this case, under cameras, I'm using 73 of 100 camera licenses. 
I'm using zero of 100 doors. I'm using one of 64 recording servers. Remote sites are disabled. As far as UVSS goes, I have zero of four UVSSs installed. ANPR is enabled, smart walls are enabled, GIS maps are enabled. As I update my license file, then of course this area would update as well. In any case, that is the management section of Hike Central. A lot of very important things in there, especially when you're first setting up your Hike Central control client for first usage. That way you know where everything's gonna go, where everything's gonna be, and ultimately it will make your life as potentially the system administrator and the life of the user much easier because you're gonna know everything about how it's set up on that machine.